If you've driven on the New York State Thruway between here and Pennsylvania, you might have noticed that there is one stretch that is very rough. We first told you back in May about this part of the highway that is in desperate need of repair, but whether it will be fixed anytime soon looks doubtful. And after our first story on the issue, we are told the conversations were being held to address this problem, but five months later, nothing's been fixed. Tonight, our Dave McKinley is holding people in power accountable to find out what needs to be done to repair this potentially dangerous roadway. It is a section of the thruway noticeably different from what one typically finds along the state's 500 mile long superhighway. Its state of disrepair so severe, the speed limit has been reduced to 45. It is only three miles in length, but quite conspicuously, it is the section of the thruway which runs entirely and exclusively within the bounds of the Seneca Nation's Cattaraugus territory. It's been this way for some time, as some of you have noticed through emails like this one asking, have you looked into the deplorable condition of the section of the I-90 that runs through the Seneca Indian Reservation? It seems in the interest of public safety, any differences need to be settled and the necessary repairs should be made. Getting to the root of all this has been somewhat of a bumpy road. When we approached the state Thruway Authority to ask, what is the deal here? They suggested we really had ought to be talking to the Seneca Nation. Okay then. But when we asked the Seneca Nation to please explain their side of the story, they suggested that we really had ought to be talking to the Thruway Authority. We can tell you that when we first asked about this in May, the Thruway Authority took nearly two weeks to respond with a statement noting that last fall it had repaved the roadway from Dunkirk to Silver Creek. When we noted that had nothing to do with our inquiry, the Thruway Authority offered further only that it was continuing to engage with the Seneca Nation to proceed with a contract to begin rehabilitation of the roadway, never saying what issues may have been preventing this from happening. Initially, the Seneca were nearly as cryptic, offering only a statement that it had reviewed a maintenance request from the Thruway Authority for the stretch that traverses its territory and that the request had been approved but never saying what type of maintenance that request involved. As they were a party to it, we asked the Thruway, but its spokesperson emailed back to say that without having seen the Seneca resolution, I would never want to speak on their behalf. And that's the way it went until yesterday when the Seneca Nation president agreed to share their perspective. What would it take to get it fixed? Have a meeting, discuss exactly what the parameters are of the maintenance and the repair and uh, move it forward. And know. they won't do that? No. What's the deal? Uh, we had meetings scheduled with the New York State Thruway Authority and uh, they canceled them. Why does there have to be a meeting? I mean, why can't they just pave the damn road? Uh, well, we contend that's an uh, illegal uh, uh, right away through the territory. And subject to agreements like the Tribal Employment Rights Ordinance requiring a certain number of workers on any such job being native, nation monitors to oversee construction to look out for nation interests and that it be paid 3% of contract costs for doing so. But some suspected there might be more beneath the surface of this crumbling pavement. The Seneca Nation, the state of New York, that had their issues on a variety of topics. What do you think this one is tied to? Probably the compact. He's referencing the Seneca's contention that under its gaming compact with New York, it no longer owes the state proceeds from its casinos, a dispute now headed to arbitration. See, I didn't think it was tied to the current casino dispute because this road's been in disrepair since before that surfaced. I don't know. That's all I can say. You know, I, I'm not a mind reader and uh, I've stopped trying to figure out why they're doing the things they do. But Thruway motorists might have been encouraged when what looks like some honest to goodness paving recently began until they may have noticed, as we did, the work stops precisely where the Seneca boundary begins and where this sign makes reference to another contention of the Seneca that the nation should be paid a $1 toll for every vehicle passing through here. If they said, OK, President Gates, here's a check for $675 million for what we owe, do you think that road would get paved? I can't say that. You know, if they want to maintain that they want to maintain their road, they'd still have to come to us and look for that. You know, that might settle uh, some of our uh, disagreement with them. 
Even though a Thruway spokesperson told us just this week there is nothing new to report, we noticed on the agency's website that there might be. Right here, under future projects where it indicates a $30 million contract is due to be let next year to address this section of the Thruway. Seems an awful lot for some patch and go, but here again, when we asked her to confirm that repaving is in the offing, all she said was, it's listed as future projects. These move around. Does the Seneca Nation own any part of this in terms of the current state of disrepair on this? No. You know, we're going to do what we can to work out the agreement to, for them to maintain a road through our, through our territory and, yeah, and be treated fairly about it. Representatives of State Assemblyman David DiPietro and Senator Chris Jacobs, who represent that area, told us they were unsuccessful in their attempts to lodge any more information from the Thruway Authority, although a spokesperson for Jacobs says the senator did send a letter to the Thruway this week urging them to get going. Asked if the Thruway Authority had a response to the Seneca's assertions that it's unwilling to talk to them, its spokesperson emailed me today to say, thank you for reaching out. We are going to decline comment. Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News.